Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about Alpha Investments video, exposure, stores reducing exposure to Magic the Gathering. And I'm just going to give you a numbers example of why stores are not going to carry as much Magic the Gathering. Magic the Gathering is very cost intensive. Uh, it comes down to the player base. And again, people don't want to ever tell you the truth about this situation, but let me, let me take another example, a more extreme example, also Wizard of the Coast. Wizard of the Coast loves getting free work. Remember the whole Christine Sprankle, they never paid her a dime to use her likeness and image on photos for GP Vegas, which was the lar largest event. They don't pay their judges. In fact, the judges pay them or pay a third party organization. Uh, they don't pay anybody. Um, you have artists not being paid and it really comes down to that mentality. So as a store, you offer a play environment for let's take Dungeons and Dragons. These kiddos, they can be there for many, many, many days. They can go there, have a giant campaign. The campaign takes 90 days and they're not really buying anything. They bring outside food. They meet up at your place, kind of almost like a local library that's open really late at night. They use your electricity, they use your bathroom, they use your extra parking, right? Because they get there early, so your actual customers cannot park anywhere if you're in a city that has, like Houston, that doesn't have that much parking, and they can stay there for a long time. Now, when a new book comes, and the new maps or whatever, I don't play Dungeons & Dragons, they come out, Amazon will have it cheaper than your distributor. And many stores, including my own store, it was actually just easier to buy off Amazon and then try to sell it for a few extra dollars to the Dungeons and Dragons crowd. So it's another Wizard of Coast product where you are providing all these services, including a place for them to play. And what you get is you get nothing, right? Because the product that you would be selling, they will never buy from you at a reasonable cost they're gonna buy from Amazon because it's cheaper. Magic the Gathering is exactly the same way. So take Pokemon. Most Pokemon people, they come in, they buy a few packs, they rip some product open, even at the store, they take it home to open on their own time. And that's it. So they come in and they come out. Magic players, they don't buy anything because again, everything is cheaper on Amazon or cheaper from Alpha Investments you as a physical local game store will never have the cheapest price on singles because TCG player will always be able to beat you. You will never have the cheapest price on boxes because there are distributors pretending to be actual stores and selling below distribution costs again because they have different margins, right? There's people like Alpha Investments who are selling thousands of dollars of bundles, you know, for people to open. Again, if you buy a $1,000 a month bundle, what else? I mean, how much more product do you want to open? Like, right, for that month? Probably not. And if you want to open more, you can just buy more bundles. And you're sitting here as a local game store owner and you're just kind of like, you know what? This is not working. So I have a distributor. I We carry Magic product and it's just not profitable um, from collector's edition to set blisters. So all, all these products are not profitable. Um, their margins are not, like I look at the product I buy from a distributor, then I go on Amazon, <laughs> it's cheaper. And it's like, oh geez, you know, and it's not my distributor's fault. My distributor is a good distributor. And for many of his other products, like Pokemon products, for instance, $2, $2.10 a pack. I can't find that on Amazon cheaper. Even Fusion Strike, you can't find $2.10 a pack after after taxes on Fusion Strike. So if I wanted to buy a bunch of packs to open on live stream or do something like that, it would actually make sense. So there are products that from my, from financially make sense. And there's products that do not. Magic the Gathering, when you have set boosters going for $60 on Amazon, you even if you get a good price on the set, like $3.10 is a pretty good price on set boosters, right? At least I think so. But when there are sets like Kaldenheim, Crimson, Vow, and I mean, then you then go and look at what a box costs and it's like, oh shit, <laughs> this is not mathematically going to work out. 
The problem with Magic product is it is declining in value. So it cannot, Pokemon product for the most part stays above $100 a box and many times 110, 120 is not like unreasonable. Um, Magic product does not stay above $100 a box. So even at the $100 a box kind of limit for the draft versus the regular Pokemon pack, Pokemon doesn't have set, they don't have collectors, they don't have, you know, it's just one type of booster pack, okay? It's just financially never going to work because at the end of the day, like, why would, if I, if I have to pay more money for this set pack then Amazon selling it, which I am. You know, I'm paying free 10 for a set pack times 30 packs, that's $90 plus from a distributor cost. Actually, you know, that's close to, uh, I mean, 93, I mean, and then I see on Amazon for 60 bucks on sale and it's like, unless somebody wants to buy like one pack to open, it's not. it's just not gonna be feasible for me to continue to buy these things because there's no, the margins are negative. Like you're actually just burning your cash flow. So again, that's kind of where I am with these things. Um, it, it's pretty ugly. I'm not going to lie to you and say that magic is, you know, as a store owner that we can really carry that much of it because the profit margin is just so bad. You're just, I mean, we have a distributor and we still can't match Amazon prices. And that should scare you because when, and, and these are regular Amazon mats when they call it massive discount. You know, uh, I mean, it's it's wild, right? I mean, look at the recent sets, Crimson Val, Kaldenheim, there, there's a Midnight midnight Hunt and, and they're sets that they got dumped on you, dumped on me, and there's no way for me to move it because there's just A, so much of it and B, nobody, Again, A, there's so much of it. B, nobody wants it. And C, if anyone actually wanted it, they can get it prime delivered in no time at all. And it would just be cheaper. And you know, I, I think um, one point I wanna make, Tulare Community College, right? He makes a kind of funny point where uh, on for the Prime Day, Amazon Prime Day to celebrate the 30th anniversary they were actually promoting all the deals there. So they had like their own prime deal was going on at the prime day, the second prime day, because one prime day is not enough. And you know, <laughs> any store owner is looking at this and like, what the heck? It was like, it was like a set booster for, I bought, I bought them too. It was a set booster for like 60 bucks. It was like a, a drop booster for like 55 and then some EDA stacks for like, you know, for like under cost. Well, I mean, like, what what are you gonna do? Like, I don't understand. I, I mean, what are you gonna do when the biggest online seller is has prices? And it's not just them, right? Your competition is also Alpha Investments. It's anybody online, and you're even you're about to go. Oh, well, if the customer is physically there, why can't you make a sale for them? The customer is there. The magic customer is there, not to buy things from your store. They're there to take time from you. They want free tournaments. They want to just hang out for hours and hours and hours, right? The magic player does not spend money in the store. I, I hate to tell you this, unless the store has food, like, you know, $10, $12, $15 chicken tenders, right? No free tendies or coffee or some type of like beer or something like that. Every single successful store I know in Houston, they have turned it half into a cafe. I can name them all. They all have some cafe component to them because that is the only way that you can make money in this industry. You, you're not gonna make money selling boxes, blisters. Like I just explained to you, it's negative margin, meaning the price that you I get my card from a distributor at is more money than if I just went on Amazon <laughs> as a store. That is not true for Pokemon. That's not true for My Hero Academia. That's not true for Fire Emblem Cypher, which is a dead game, by the way, if I order from Japan. It's not true for like any other card game. It's true for one card game. And that card game is magic. So what is the problem? I mean, the problem is that. It's a financial losing. I mean, you, don't, you, have, you, you have to be a mathematical idiot not to figure this out problem out. If I buy for eight, $82 a box 
and then I go to Amazon and the same box is $60 a box and that's worth a distributor by the way why would I okay cool my, my distributor sold it to me for 82 he really kind of forced it on me I bought it because I thought I could sell it for 100 I put it in my store for 100 it doesn't sell or I get complaints about the high price right I'm only trying to make you know 18 bucks you know maybe I put down for 90 I'm only trying to make eight bucks less than 10 percent of my value I put into it and just trying to make a 10 percent margin my dudes and then you go on Amazon to layer community calls is retweeting their prime sale and you see all the boxes under 60 multiple sets under 60 and you're just like oh I I have those it's savage, you know. Bye, guys.